All right, you might be wondering why your new Toyota or Lexus doesn't get a front locker in it. That's right. All the other trucks in the world market, I'm talking about the Land Cruiser 300, that's on the TNGAF platform. Uh, it gets a front locker, at least it has the option. But here in America, you can't get a front locker on your Tundra, on your Land Cruiser 250, on your GX 550, on your Tacoma. And we're gonna get right into that about why you can't get a front locker and I'm just gonna skip to it. And that is Toyota thinks Americans are too stupid to figure out how to properly use a front locking differential on their trucks and SUVs. And here's the sad part, they're right. Unfortunately, things such as lockers and off-road skill and when to use, in other words, when to use what, when to use your lockers, when to use your MTS, your traction control, uh, your A-Track, etc., your crawl control, it's all lost today in America. And I feel like Toyota has marked the American market as too dumb to handle front lockers. And there's some logic behind this. If you look at uh, recent off-road reviews of the Tacoma or the Tundra, but especially the Tacoma where a popular uh, YouTube car review channel went ahead and broke part of the front axle on a non-locked Tacoma simply because they decided to put it in four low <laughs> on ice in rock mode and then decide to floor it and then they were surprised when the axle broke well that's why you can't have front lockers here in america anymore because the moment toyota brings front lockers to the american market that's exactly what most people are going to do yeah i'm talking about off-road ignorance and there's no sweet or, or political way to say this it's just what the facts are and the facts are most people in America, if they're gonna take their, you know, truck or SUV off-road, they're gonna go, well, lock everything, put it in four low, and then floor it. And then, as far as MTS goes, well, put it in rock mode. Doesn't matter that I'm on sand, put it in rock mode. Doesn't matter that I'm on snow or ice, put it in rock mode. Well, what if we're in mud? Put it in rock mode. That's just what people do. And so if you add a front locker into the equation, you already guessed it, it's gonna be put the front locker on and floor it. And that's gonna cause axles to break. So Toyota has effect effectively, <laughs> effectively uh, made the, uh, their, their TNGA trucks idiot proof here in America. They're not gonna give you, or the Americans, the front locker because you can't handle it because you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna use it in situations where you don't need it now <laughs> excuse me yeah this this may or may not be controversial to people many people who actually off-road and i'm not talking keyboard off-roaders i'm talking about people actually off-road know that any type of locker is something that you're going to want to use when appropriate that doesn't mean you can't use it a lot or keep it on a lot or use it in many situations but it's not without um, a certain level of personal responsibility. And it doesn't matter what vehicle you're in. So you can't say, well, if it was a solid axle instead of the uh, Toyota's independent front suspension, if it was a solid axle, then you could have a front locker and it'd be stronger and blah, 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 blah. You still have to follow rules. I don't care how solid your axle is on your solid vehicle, solid axle vehicle, the axles that most people think are solid, you know, those big axle tubes like you see, you know, front and rear differential on a Jeep, those are just the carriers, those are just the tubes. Inside of those things, those hollowed out big beefy axles, solid axles, you got these little skinny one and 1 1.4 inch, no more than an inch and a half, normal looking axles, the same type of axles that are in um, the rear of this and the front of of uh, a vehicle like this. My point is, inside of any axle is a skinny old axle, where we're talking independent front suspension or solid front axle. You got a skinny little axle in there and you have to respect it. So even if you had, quote unquote, uh, solid axle, oh, there's the police, better slow down here. Even if you had, um, 
even if you had, uh, they're cool around here. <laughs> he's off-roading too, hey. <laughs> Maybe he's doing a YouTube video about why he can't have front lockers on his police vehicle. Same idea. He'd probably have them blocked right now and uh, costing the county uh, millions in repairs. <laughs> I'm just playing. Anyway, back to uh, whatever vehicle you drive, like a Jeep Wrangler, if it's got a solid front axle inside or just little regular skinny axles and you have to respect them, you can't just lock it and floor it in four low in the wrong MTS mode and hope for the best. If you're driving a Jeep, Wrangler, whatever, and you start hopping and flooring it on four low in the wrong mode on rocks, you will snap your axle. So, um, the learning curve surrounding um, uh, lockers in general is why Toyota is not going to bring you a front locker, at least not yet, because the first thing people are going to do is go out and break them the moment, the first time they go off road, because they're not going to have, they're not going to take the time to learn off roading skill. And I'm not saying this to be like, you know, some off roading commando nonsense. I'm just talking basic understandings of. Okay, this is how a locking differential works. This is how open differential works. This is what track does. This is what a track does. This is what MTS does. This is what crawl control does. Despite these systems being 20 years old now, generally speaking, many people still don't understand how they work. You still get comments like, A track's no good. Lockers are superior for A track. Without people taking the time to understand that no, actually a track is pretty darn good and Toyota claims, and I agree, that it's superior to a locker because uh, a track can send more power to the one wheel that has uh, traction. Mathematically, a locker can't do that. A track mathematically can send more power to the wheel on the road that actually has track it, traction. That's why it's been around for 20 years. But in these 20 years, you still got people going, Let's get rid of all that. Turn all that electronic babysitter. Turn it all off and lock it. And then you see them on YouTube breaking press vehicles because <laughs> they don't know what in the devil they're doing. So again, we're not saying off-road command, commando level of off-road knowledge. It's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the basics are still missing in Americana or modern contemporary <laughs> uh, American off-road culture. It's still stuck in antiquity of lock it, four low, floor it. <laughs> you know, we're in 2024, we got, we got the technology. Uh, next topic is, and then we're just having a uh, time ranting here as we get on pavement. Uh, next topic is all-terrain tires. And a lot of people ask me, what's a good all-terrain tire? Or they comment on the all-terrain tires on this vehicle, and, and they start asking about, you know, all-terrain tires. And what I want to say about all-terrain tires, and this again is a rant, is that you get a lot of, you hear a lot of people and reviewers go say something like when they review a new truck or vehicle, like a Tacoma, and it's on street tires, all-season tires, and they take it off-road, and then it doesn't go their way, they go, but if it had all-terrain tires on it, or if it had better tires on it, it would've got... They start blaming the tires, and it's really, really needs to dress it. Because I don't, I don't think there's a lot on YouTube that it, it talks the truth about this. All-terrain tires, at best, give you about 10% improvement of traction in simply some situations. Loose sand, a little bit of mud, a little bit of loose surfaces. That's it at best 10% in those situations. They are not some sort of night and day, save your behind, get you out of trouble, miracle tire. The whole point of an all-terrain tire is to be tough. The originator, the original all-terrain tire that we're on now, the BFG KO2, which everybody's familiar with, they've been around forever, is a Baja 1000 racing tire. That is a Mexican desert racing type of tire. And that all-terrain tire was designed to be a tough desert tire. So its main purpose was not to grip or do miracles rock crawling or any or miracles in mud or any anything like that. It was meant to take a beating physically and be tough physically 
And part of that physical toughness is UV resistance. It's 110 degrees out here. And I don't know what deserts down in Mexico. I know it's not the Mojave, but it's the desert touching the Mojave. Like, But it's similar to, to, to Mojave that we're in now. And so it's meant to be UV resistant. We don't garage this car. It sits outside in the sun. And these BFG KO2s, just like any BFG KO2 you see out here in the desert, does it resists dry rot really, really good. I don't know what type of voodoo magic they put in, in these tires, but um, it does a good job with the abusive uh, abusive summer uh, or you know hot weather, desert weather. So that's what an all-terrain tire is. It's supposed to be a tough tire, not a traction miracle. And uh, a lot of people start talking about, here's how you know you don't need an all-terrain tire. Well, how does it drive in the rain? Well, how good is it in snow? <laughs> What does it sound like and feel like on the road? <laughs> if, you, if those are your concerns, you don't need an all-terrain tire. You need an all-season tire, and you have excellent choices of all-season tires uh, out there. But uh, how do you know if you need an all-terrain tire? A, if you live on roads like that, or you're mostly off-road like that, and you're doing it daily. All-terrain, all the time, all-terrain, all the time. You get what I'm rambling? Uh, it's a it's meant to live this dual uh, use lifestyle for those who have to live on and off road it's not meant to be a suburban tire or a mall crawler that's what its uh, purpose was for so you know you need want an all-terrain tire if you're like I don't want it to break and I don't want it to dry rot I don't care if it rides a little bit more crappier it can it can ride up to 40% crappier I don't care I just need the tire to work because if we do, if we use all seasons out here, people who live off road, what happens is they dry rot quicker and they can't take a beating. The scuffs, the punctures, all that sort of thing. Uh, it just, it just, they just can't handle it as well. So your all terrain tire is allows you to have that toughness off road and still come back like we're doing here on road. And then when I come back this way, back uh, off road every single day. And the thing needs to last. So I understand that um, a lot of people buy all-terrain tires for looks. That's controversial, whatever. Uh, but that's just the way it is. You know, I'm just trying to be truthful here and, and be frank on this channel. Uh, and if you want all-terrain tires for looks, do realize that's all good. That's cool. They do look cool, right? But um, you know, just realize they're not meant to for rain and snow. For rain, you want an all-season tire. For snow, you want a snow tire. Snow tire is night and day. If you get a legit, bona fide snow tire, if you live in a snowy region and you're on the snow, in the snow on road most of the time, you want a snow tire. So keep that in mind. Um, whether you whether you know about snow tires, you know any of my rambling or not. Uh, if you have questions about, you know, what what is this? What's the deal with these all-terrain tires? They're meant for toughness every all-terrain tire is essentially based upon the originator the bfg ko2 i know it wasn't called the ko2 originally it was called like the t slash a same idea they they were the originators back in the 70s and that's what it was for it's meant to be a tough tire and everything that's based off of that today is still the same so when you get an all-terrain tire and you put looks aside what it's primarily doing for you is toughness and longevity while giving you a reasonable ride off-road. If you want a night and day miracle tire off-road, then you want to get a mud terrain tire. That's Those are real off-road tires. <laughs> and uh, those will give you uh, more than 10% difference off-road. They will give you something like 30% uh, some might even say 40 or even 50% more, uh, depending on how blocky that tread is. So um, when you think, uh, again, all-terrain tires, think toughness. If you want off-road miracle, off-road traction, mud tire, that's what you want. Now, of course, there's going to be trade-offs of, of wear on the mud tire. It's going <laughs> to it's gonna be straight-up dangerous feeling on road and loud. And that's why you have all terrains, you know, to kind of bridge that gap. 
but they do not perform miracles. And today's ranting uh, is just nonsensical ranting. I'm just uh, having a, you know, these are just casual videos here. But uh, I did want to address kind of this front locker thing because, and, and alter entire thing, because I don't think it comes up enough in discussion uh, online. And there's a lot of questions. And why can't we get front lockers and why don't they put all-terrain tires on the trucks right out of the box now you'll break the locker and the all-terrain tires won't make that much of a difference every trial in these off-road uh, in these off-road trucks and suvs that toyota performs in other words when toyota tests these vehicles off-road when i say these vehicles i mean all t and j t and j f platform land cruiser tri whatever tundra tacoma sequoia all the trucks and suvs they all have to pass off-road trials on street tires. There are no mud tires. There are no all-terrain tires. Regular all-season tires. So mud, sand, ruts, moguls, uh, whatever the surface is, uh, loose rocks, all of them, okay? <laughs> they thrash it, and it has to pass the Toyota's uh, standards off-road uh, with normal road tires. And we've taken this vehicle when we got it brand new to see what, you know, does, does it live up to the hype? Can this thing really off-road in Michelin latitude all-season tires, which is a great all-season tire, don't get me wrong. They're very expensive, high-quality tires. Michelin owns BFG, by the way, so KO2s, Michelin, same thing, high-quality. And the answer was yes. The, uh, you know, we went up all sorts of crazy trails on regular street tires, just like we saw in the Toyota off-road trial videos, and they've been doing this forever since whenever in their Land Cruisers. They've, they've never used all-terrain tires. So that right there, that that practice toy of Toyota putting these SUVs, these Land Cruisers, uh, through trials on regular tires and sending them out to be sold, that should tell you everything you need to know about uh, how much difference a all-terrain tire is gonna make versus an all-season tire so again rantings mindless rantings uh if you're still here for some reason please remember to uh, like and subscribe it does uh, help support the channel and someone's going to ask uh, so will we see front lockers will we see front lockers on toyota's brought to america and uh what we'd like to and while i don't personally think it's necessary because a track on the front is in my opinion superior to a front locker because it's going to send uh, up to 50% of power to the uh, to one wheel versus a front locker will only send 20% 25% of power to one wheel. Um, you know, I don't think Toyota is going to be eager to bring them to America for uh, reasons mentioned, and meaning susceptible to abuse by Americans. I have no idea if the Australians are more dis disciplined. They get the front locker. Uh, the uh, Saudis in the Middle East, uh, in Middle Eastern market, they get the front locker. Are they more disciplined? Are they more logical? Is it a cultural thing? I don't know. What we do know is Americans like to do stupid things with cars. <laughs> we do know that. We do all agree on that. I'm guilty of this. So are you. <laughs> so Toyota, Toyota may just uh, have may have the. Uh, parental child safety controls <laughs> on the uh, front locker uh, for the American market. And they may have been watching the reception of uh, Americans adopting a track versus lockers and they probably didn't like what they saw. That's why they put the front, the rear locker back on the, uh, the T and GAF platform. Talk about the GX 550s, the new forerunners. The, yeah, they brought back the rear locker on, on many of these T and GAF, these uh, new New trucks now, not because uh, not because they wanted to, but for marketing reasons. They were like, because people just don't get a track. Oh, hey, get a locker, uh, lock it up, blah blah blah. <laughs> and they're like, just give them the freaking rear locker to shut them up and sell the vehicle. Um, and I'll say it again. I'm trying not to turn this into an a track rant video, a track versus lockers. But I do want to make uh, this note about lockers versus a track again and that is there is no you need a locker or you need lockers trail that a track cannot do in other words you can't steer me to a trail that you need lockers to go up that you're not going to make it with a track it doesn't exist 
We've tested uh, this vehicle uh, thoroughly, and yes, we know what a our lockers are and driven lockers before. <laughs> and the uh, in comparison, uh, lockers versus a track. If you use a track actually properly and don't let off the gas when you hear the ABS doing and chattering like most people do because they don't understand that that's the way it's supposed to work. If you drive a track like yeah, like your triple locked and just drive it normally and command it to go forward it will go forward no forward momentum loss blah 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 and it will go up any trail that you think or anybody says you need lockers on i it's an open challenge show me a trail where i need lockers and i'll go in this lexus gx <laughs> with just a track just in quotations because i truly believe like toyota believes it's superior and that's why Toyota removed lockers on most of their trucks 20 years ago with the introduction of a track. It was supposed to be a replacement. It's been hit or miss as far as um, consumer acceptance, learning curve, blah, blah, blah. And that's whatever. That's just reality. That's understandable. So anyway, I have ranted absolutely enough. If you've enjoyed uh, rants like these, uh, please remember to like and subscribe. Uh, feel free to comment if you disagree. And uh, thank you and have a great, wonderful day.